I'm Gronia, one of the physios here in the Rotunda, and what I'm going to be talking to you about today is perineal massage. It is necessary to complete perineal massage from about 34 weeks of pregnancy in order to allow the pelvic floor and perineum to stretch. In labour, the pelvic floor and perineum need to stretch to about 200% and healthcare professionals recommend completing perineal massage to decrease the risk of having a tear or needing an episiotomy. Your perineum is the area between your vagina and back passage and it is the area that we need to stretch prior to labour. The same way as you wouldn't run a marathon without stretching, it's really important to complete perineal massage prior to labour. The areas that are most vulnerable is the area to the side, to the opposite side and to the back. Therefore, what I would recommend you do is using a lubricant such as coconut oil, almond oil, or vitamin E, insert either a thumb or a finger to the area, about an inch in, and pull back. What you want to feel is you want to feel a burning type sensation that shouldn't be painful. I would keep that pressure on the area for about 30 seconds to a minute. I would then move back, change position, Again, hold for another 30 seconds to a minute and move again, completing the same. You're aiming to complete up to 10 minutes of this every day from 34 weeks of pregnancy. The difficulty can be that at this stage of pregnancy, getting into a position that it will allow you to complete perineal massage. I would recommend lying on your side with your knees bent up, sitting on the loo or placing one foot on a chair. The sensation, like I said earlier on, you want to feel is a burning type sensation. If you remember when you were a child and you put your, your finger into your cheek and you pulled, that's the exact same sensation you want to feel down here. What this will achieve is it will allow your pelvic floor to stretch. It will increase the stretchiness of the area. By doing this, your pelvic floor will be better equipped for the pushing stage of labor. If you have any anxieties or concerns regarding this, please talk to your obstetrician or midwife. Now we're going to look at the second stage of labour. So at this stage you're 10 centimetres dilated, the first stage of labour is over and now it's time to start pushing your baby out. We're going to have a look at the positions you can use and uh, ways that you can push to get through this stage. Now, this is a stage where your midwife is going to be giving you guidance or your doctor. We're going to be monitoring how your baby is doing and these factors will play into what happens during this stage. But you are also a factor as well. And I would like you to be thinking about what positions you can use, what would you like to use, and just to realize what's involved with pushing, what's normal, what things you can do. Um, pushing is very hard work. Um, there are a small minority of women who describe it as just breathing their baby out and it being a more passive thing. But for most women, they have to work hard to push their baby out. And like I said, your midwife and doctor will guide you through this process. But there are things you can start thinking about now to prepare for this. One is to think about what position you're going to be in. The most common position we see are people lying down. But it can be helpful to be more upright. Um, some positions that can be used if you don't have an epidural would be standing, leaning onto the bed. The bed is raised up and you're standing with your legs a bit wider and pushing your baby out in this position. Or if you haven't had an epidural, you might be on your hands and knees on the bed and pushing in that position. A lot of women will have an epidural and I'm going to talk to you about some positions you can use with that. So if you have an epidural or you'd prefer just to be on the bed, there are two positions that are often used. One is with the back of the bed raised up and then you are supporting your own legs nice and wide like this. Um, this is a common position that's used. Another one that's used is this same setup but you on your side with your partner supporting your leg. So usually on your left side. Again, trying to keep the back of the bed up to, for gravity to assist you. And then your partner supporting your leg in this position for you. It's important that they don't support the leg too wide because that can put a lot of pressure on your pubic joint here. But just bringing the leg to a comfortable distance for you while you're pushing. And then when the contraction ends, you're lowering the leg down. 
in between the contractions, do whatever you can to break up the tension. So if you've been scrunching like this, try and let go, shake out those shoulders, relax out those hands. If you've been tightening your jaw, relax your jaw muscles. You might take a sip of water, your partner could wipe down your face, and give you some words of reassurance. This is hard work and you need lots of encouragement and your partner plays a really important role in this and encouraging you to keep going. Um, it's not unusual for a first time mom to take an hour to two hours to push their baby out um, and getting brief rests in between the contractions. So as you get your rest, do whatever you can to break up the tension in your body. Um, next we want to talk about how do you push, what's involved. Well, the ideal is that your body will lead you, that you will just know what to do. It will come automatically to you. And if you haven't had an epidural, that could well be your experience and you'll be just pushing naturally. Um, if you have an epidural though, it can be confusing. It can feel like push what? I don't know what to push. I don't know how to feel. Um, and there are different ways of pushing your baby out. Again, your midwife will guide you through this, um, depending on how you're doing and how baby's doing and depending on what they think is best for you at the time. Sometimes it is necessary to hold your breath and push. Um, it's a really strong downward force and it can get that baby out when we need to get baby out. But it wouldn't be the ideal way to be pushing um, over an hour to two hours. So I'd like you to try a, a different way of pushing first and see if this works for you. If not, then holding your breath and push may be the best thing that you need to do at that time. So the way that we teach pushing in um, the antenatal classes is we get you to breathe in first of all, just like you did um, in the first stage of labor. So you're breathing in and allowing that tummy to expand, which helps your pelvic floor to relax. So you're letting go of that pelvic floor. And then as you breathe out, you are pushing down towards your back passage. You're pushing as if you're doing a bowel motion the size of a baby's head. It's a lot of effort. You're directing that force downwards towards your back passage. But what you want to try and do is keep your tummy muscles out. Don't suck them back in again. If you suck them back in again, it can cause your pelvic floor to tighten and make it harder to push your baby out. Or if you're afraid and fearful and trying to tighten around your back passage because you're trying to control something, that's not going to work. You need to let go of your pelvic floor and release it. So you're breathing in, your tummy gets bigger and you're breathing out as you push. Really hard and you're bracing your belly outwards. Um, it can help if you're willing to make noise and the type of noises that help are not screams, not panic noises, but they're really strong noises of effort, a long, low, moaning, groaning sound. It's really a bit embarrassing talking about it, but it's so primal. You're trying to make a really low sound, like a Ooh! kind of a sound, a real effort sound. Because uh, like I said, this is hard work. So you're breathing in, belly gets big, you're breathing out or whatever noise feels comfortable to you to make, but breathing out and keeping that belly out, getting a forceful movement down onto the pelvic floor. Um, you'll get a few good pushes in with each contraction. The contraction ends, and again, you refresh, let go, and get yourself ready for the next one. As you're pushing, um, you might be doing really, really well and flying along and baby's coming down and you're getting right to the end and baby's head is now crowning and your pelvic floor is stretching like we talked about in the perineal massage section of the videos. You'll feel that burning, stretching sensation and often the midwife will cue you or ask you to slow down and not push. So to pant instead. <laughs> You're trying to allow that perineum more time to stretch, to reduce the amount of tearing that you may experience. So if your midwife asks you to slow down and stop pushing, listen, do your best, pant, try and allow that perineum to stretch a bit more until they cue you to go ahead and push. Other times you might be really fatiguing and feeling like giving up and sometimes putting your hand down to feel baby's head there can really give you that extra surge of adrenaline to get you over the finish line. It's a balancing act really between you, your midwife and doctor, or, and your baby. And you need to listen to your caregiver, you need to listen to your body. This type of pushing can be difficult to get the hang of. It's actually the way that you're supposed to do a bowel motion, um, on a more gentle scale, of course. So a good way to practice this can be on the toilet when you're doing a bowel motion. You're breathing in, relaxing your tummy, relaxing your pelvic floor. You're breathing out as you push down towards your back passage, keeping your belly out rather than sucking it in. So your belly gets big and your belly gets hard. 
We have a handout on the website you can have a look at um, to, that will talk you through this. And I would encourage you to practice this type of pushing on the toilet, more gently, of course, when you're doing bowel motions compared to when you're pushing a baby out. Um, things you can do to prepare for this stage, like I said, are your perineal massage, picturing yourself in the different positions, um, practicing the pushing on the toilet. Um, it's hard work, but you will get there. And in the end, your baby is born and it's all worth it.